Hey guys, CYC fam, Pastor B here. Drinking my coffee. Yes, I drink coffee all the time. I'm um, glad we're hanging out again tonight or today, depending on when you're watching this. It's a great thing about YouTube is uh, it's on all the time. If you are just joining us for the first time, you weren't able to see uh, last week's message, there's going to be a link in the bio below or the description below, the bio description, whatever. And uh, up above me, the little eyeball thing that pops out, the little white bar, that thing, you can click on that. It'll take you to it as well. Um, talking Last week, we talked about chill. What is to chill. We need to chill. Christ has it. Lean in and learn. Um, it's all there in that video. Uh, and tonight I want to talk about fear. And I want to talk about a different way of looking at fear. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the author Rudyard Kipling, or maybe it's Rudyard Kipling. I don't know how you pronounce his name the right way. I'll say Rudyard Kipling. He's the guy who wrote the book, The Jungle Book. Disney made a movie out of it and all that great stuff. He says this, of all the liars in the world, Sometimes the worst are our own fears. That's right, fear's a liar. You know that, I'm not gonna sing it again. Fear is a liar. They might just throw in a clip of me singing it from last week. But you see, fear has this really bad habit of stopping us from doing what we were created to do, what we were meant to do. There's things that you've dreamt of doing, but fear for some reason has held you back. Maybe uh, you've just heard things from other people and people speak fear into you. And the horrible thing is when you allow fear to take control of the wheel, you end up making the wrong decisions. Anytime you make a fear-filled description, description. Tonight I wanted to share with you a story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible actually. And um, it's about a teen who was in a very fear-filled situation, and he chose to look at fear differently. This young man was in a situation where fear was controlling everybody, and he chose not to allow fear to control him. And it's in the Old Testament, in 1 Samuel, verse 17, and it's the story of David and Goliath. And I'm not gonna read verbatim the entire thing. I'm gonna kind of paraphrase it for you, just so you guys can understand it. And if you wanna read along, you can pull it up, click on the link or whatnot. So to set the scene, you got to understand what was going on and what was happening. Um, the Israelites, which were God's chosen people, were constantly at war and battling with these Philistines. And the Philistines didn't believe in God. They believed in gods and deities and all that kind of stuff. And they were always battling, always fighting head to head. And they were in the middle of this particular battle or war. And you had both armies facing off. They were on tops of hills and there's a valley in between the two of them and they were facing off. And this crazy thing happens is the Philistine champion, Goliath, the guy was just ripped. He was a giant. And these, he, well, okay. So he's freakishly huge and freakishly scary. And he's just taunting the Israelites. And he's, he basically throws out the challenge. He goes, look, look, we don't even have to go out of the fight. How about you send your best warrior out to fight me here in this valley here and whoever wins the other side will be the other side's slave. I don't know if, if Goliath had like a Jersey accent or if he was from the Brooklyn or New York or something like that, but it works, so go with it. So he's like throwing out taunts. He's like, come on over here, you mooly, you know, and, and he's, but he's ginormous. The Israelites, the tallest person among them was Saul and he was like a little over six feet tall. So everybody looks at Saul and Saul's like, what? Huh? What? See, he was the king, and technically he should have been the one to go forward and defend his people. Remember, he's, a, he's the king of the Israelites, God's chosen people. Here's this uncircumcised Philistine, and he was mocking God and mocking God's chosen people, and Saul said, I, I, uh, I pulled a hammy. I uh, pulled the hammy. Oh, I can't. I can't do it. Oh, my back. Oh, my neck and my back. He's like, I can't. I can't. So I'll tell you what. Whoever wants to fight this dude, this 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 giant guy, whoever fights him, I'm gonna set you up with some mega bling. I'm gonna set you up with tons of money. You get to marry my hot daughter, and uh, your whole family doesn't have to pay taxes. How's that sound? And uh, the Israelites didn't didn't really go. For it, So you've got the Philistine side filling up this valley with taunts and challenges. And you got the Israelite side 
all doing their laundry because every time Goliath came out, they'd pee their pants. So David shows up, everybody's crazy, like I said, and he's dropping off food and everybody's running around and he's like, what's going on? And they're like, dude, crazy giant guy, king threw out a hammy or threw out his back. Whoever fights him is gonna get, you know, the hot daughter, lots of money and not have to pay taxes. And this teen guy is like, what? Like, now you gotta understand, David is known as a man after God's own heart. David saw things differently and we need to start seeing things differently too. Because again, fear is that false expectations appearing real. Well, here's the thing. You gotta understand how much God loves you and how much God loved David. David knew that God loved him and David knew that God had his back. David had so many experiences um, where God had his back. See, David watched sheep all the time. He was the youngest. He got like the, the boring jobs, you know, and he had to watch sheep. Well, you understand back in those days, you know, you're watching sheep, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, would go after, maybe not tigers, but anyways, they would go after the sheep. And David literally, when a lion or a bear would grab one of his sheep, he would run after it. And he would like basically be like, hey, yo, drop the sheep. And if the sheep was dropped and lion said, ooh, a boy, or bear said, ooh, yummy boy, David was like, he would grab that thing and go, he just bop it right over the head. And he's like, and he basically, he clubbed, killed lions and bears with a club. And so David's like, y'all are freaking out over this big old giant guy who's making fun of God, he's making fun of us. I've fought bears and lions, which are pretty freaky. That guy, I can take him out. Actually, I don't really have to worry about it, see, because God's got my back. I'm fighting for God right now. I'm not fighting for me or anybody else other than the fact that we're God's chosen people, okay? David chose to ignore all the bad advice because his brothers started talking smack. His family started talking smack. You know, they're like, oh, you're just doing this for attention. You're just da, 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 da. People are going to throw things at you when they're, in, when they're in fear. They're going to, when you start to speak in faith, when you start to say, hey, you know what? This coronavirus, for example, whatever situation is going on in your life, whatever fearful thing is filling in the family or the area or your circle, <laughs> your friends, your family members, they're going to not understand, especially if they're not in the same you know, wavelength that you are with God and understanding how much God loves you and how much God's got your back, they're going to speak out of fear. They're going to be like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Or, or you're not equipped enough. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough resources. You don't have enough training. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. That's what Saul did. Saul's like, look, you're a kid. And he's like, look, I've fought bears and I've fought lions and I can do this. And then so then Saul goes and gives him advice here. Well, then use my armor, use my sword, use this stuff that you've never used before. David tries it on, says, this ain't working, man. I'm just going to fight him with what I know how to fight. And so David goes down into this valley filled with fear and taunts and negativity. And, and he looks at fear differently. See, instead of seeing fear as false expectations appearing real, he looks at fear and, and says it like this, face everything and rise. Because he chose not to be fearful and afraid. He chose to rise up. And I am going to read this next part because I love this part. This story is, again, one of my favorite stories. So David goes down and I'm, I'm gonna start right back down in verses, this is Saul, uh, 1 Samuel 17, um, verse 41. I got there. I got there. New Bible. Can't help it. Goliath walked out towards David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy, meaning he had a little sunburn on his cheeks. Anyways, he says, am I a dog that you would come at me with a stick? And then he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals, Goliath yelled. I didn't insert the, the, the curses because this is like, we want to make sure this is like rated G for God. Anyhow, David replied to the Philistines, you come at me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Pause. David, mind you, has a sling and a stick and five stones in this little bag that he carries. Five smooth stones. That's all he's got. Reinsert. And I will kill you and cut off your head 
and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. One, that's awesome. No matter what situation you're in, no matter where you're at, wherever fear is at, understand that God is going before you. God loves you, God's got your back, and you have nothing to be afraid of. Face it and rise. Face everything and rise and know that God is going before you. This is so cool because I always pictured this story differently in my head of Goliath standing there and David going with the sting. No, this is so cool. It says, as Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine smack in the forehead, right there in the forehead. It says, the stone sunk in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. Pause. He fell face down. The stone didn't kill Goliath. The stone not Goliath silly and he fell forward. This is the coolest part. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword, right? Then David ran over, this is verse 51, then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath and David used it to kill him and waka his head. That's in the Bible. That's just that's so cool. That's one of my favorite. What's one of my favorite stories in the Bible? Teenage boy. It goes on to basically like that fear that had been saturating that valley was gone in an instant when he went forward and said, "Here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here, listen, Linda. Lin Linda, listen. Linda, listen. David says, Linda, listen." I'm fighting on behalf of God. God's going before me. God's going to beat you. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut off your head. And all your people, all your men, all your soldiers, we're going we're gonna to kill them all. And, uh, and everybody kind of chuckles and laughs, like, really? And then it happens. And all the taunting, all the, the, the jeers and the insults get sucked back up into the Philistine camp. All that fear just got blown away by a single stone and a teenage boy who grabbed the enemy's own sword and ended it. And I'll tell you what, you want to talk about energy, you want to talk about testosterone, you want to talk about adrenaline that suddenly filled the army of Israel. And you know what they did? They went, oh, and then they rushed over and then the Philistines ran and, and it was mass mayhem and it was great and it was crazy. You can read it all in 1 Samuel 17 and 18 and all that great stuff. Why am I sharing all this with you? Well, because everyone is afraid right now. And I hope you're not. Uh, I, I will say this till I'm blue in the face. We are going to get through this and we are getting through this. I don't know what's going to happen with schools. Um, so many of you are stuck at home and we don't know if school is going to start back up. And to that, on behalf of my amazing camera lady, uh, Megan, I want to say welcome to being homeschooled. Right? Now you all know what it's like. Now you know. Now you know what it's like to be a homeschooler. Right? Don't be talking smack no mo, because now you're in homeschool. Anyhow, you'll get through this too, trust me. Uh, but here's the thing, you can either be afraid of coronavirus, you could be afraid of, oh, there's no more toilet paper, or you could say, you know what, God's got this. God loves us, God loves me, he loves my family, and even though my family may be afraid, I am not gonna be afraid. I'm gonna stand up in faith, I'm gonna face this, and I'm gonna rise up, and I'm gonna start saying positive things. I'm gonna start speaking life into my friends, and maybe you all are on social media, and, and your friends are texting, or they're Instagramming, or whatever it is they're doing, and if they're posting things that are fear-filled, start speaking faith into them, start encouraging them. Come up with ways to do uh, creative way, uh, things to, to be a blessing. Find out what you can do, what you can give. How can you serve in your, in your neighborhood, in your community, uh, in ways that, of course, honor the little six-foot barrier kind of thing, or you know, creative. Get creative. We're, our church has been doing drive-in church. We just had our sun uh, sunset worship or sun sunset worship service. Yeah, we all pulled up our cars and we all worshipped in our cars. I know a couple other churches now in Yuma who are also going to start doing the drive-in church. 
How awesome is that? Bring your family, you're in your car, you're, everybody's in their cars, and you get to worship, you get to be a part of, of the community of believers, and, and you get to do church. We're gonna have communion this Sunday. Uh, it's gonna be awesome, or we actually had communion this Sunday. Now we're going to, see I'm filming before Sunday. But anyways, you get the point. Um, you can do communion in your home with your friends or at, at, at just get some crackers and juice. You can use bread and water for all that matters. It's just about honoring God and knowing that God is going to get us through this. We're going to look back on this probably in three, four, five months tops. And we're going to go, man, everybody went crazy over something. And obviously because there's a lot that's not known. So people react in fear. But if we could start reacting in faith, this isn't the end of the world, okay? This is just a little weird, muddy spot on this journey of your life. Start dreaming big. Start saying, you know what? I'm gonna get through this and I'm gonna graduate and I'm gonna start doing what I dream of. I'm, I'm going to reach out for those things. Those things that maybe you're, you've are you been afraid of doing. Maybe you've been afraid to try out for a sport or afraid to audition for a, a play or whatever it is. Let this be the, the driver that says, when the door opens back up and I'm able to get back into school, I'm gonna try out, I'm gonna audition, I'm going to, to go for that role, I'm gonna ask that girl out, or maybe not ask the girl on a date, just go on a date, dating is good. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't be afraid, don't let fear dictate your future. Sound good? So I'm gonna go ahead and post some, some breakout group questions, some discussion group questions, and I wanna challenge you this week to get on your social media, download that Marco Polo, and start posting positive things. Start being that faith-filled person, that person that encourages everyone, that someone can look to and go, man, you are so positive. Like, I'm so, I so love w looking at what you're posting and be an encourager, not a discourager, you know? Be one that, that, that challenges everyone to rise up and not shrink back. Sound good? I hope so. Okay, so, if you enjoyed what you were hearing today or seeing today and all that, make sure you like and subscribe. Click on the little bell to be notified. Please share this with friends that, you know, um, let me tell you this. My daughter and my kids, you know, they're in high school and they have so many friends that they want to bring to church and their friends always feel like, oh, I'm just not really into that churchy thing. I'm just not really religious. Well, I hope this doesn't come across as really religious because I don't like religion either. I just love Jesus and, and I want to share with you guys the Bible and God's word and how it applies to your life in a fun and somewhat encouraging way. And if it embarrasses me, I don't care. But you know what? You could share this and say, hey, dude, check out this. This is our youth pastor. He's crazy. He's funny. And this is what church is like. This is what church is like on Sundays when we do youth. You should come check it out. So like, subscribe, share, do all the things that you need to do. You guys are all hip and down with it and all that good stuff. And I will see you next week on CYC Live.